five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I want to thank Chairman Johnson and Ranking Member Tonko for holding today's important legislative hearing. Over the past year, we have seen draconian actions by the Biden administration and Democrats to force Americans to buy electric vehicles. One of the clearest and most radical actions are California's new Advanced Clean Car 2 regulations. These regulations would require 35% of new cars to be electric vehicles in 2026 and fully 100% to be EVs by 2035. Thankfully, these regulations have yet to go into effect and require a waiver from the EPA under the Clean Air Act to be implemented. That is why I've introduced H.R. 1435, the Preserving Choice in Vehicle Purchases Act to prevent the EPA administrator from granting a waiver allowing California's ban on internal combustion engine sales by 2035. Although starting in California, Section 177 of the Clean Air Act will ensure that once adopted, this regulation will spread across the nation, disrupting the entire American auto market and ultimately limit what my constituents are able to buy. 17 states, including my home state of Pennsylvania, have already adopted California's clean air regulations. These states represent over 40% of the American auto market, over 40%. And any electric vehicle mandate at that large of scale is a de facto mandate on the entire market and represents a decisive shift in national policy. Let's be clear, this legislation is not anti-EVs. Those who can afford and those who want an electric vehicle should be able to buy one. But to put it bluntly, in my district, EVs simply cannot fulfill the needs of my constituents. They can't drive the distances needed. They can't maintain the charge at extreme temperatures. They can't recharge fast enough to keep hardworking Pennsylvanians on the move. An EV mandate is an abandonment of the free market principles that have enabled Americans to have the most mobility of any nation in the world. This policy will harm working and middle-class families by making cars more expensive and less capable. Only by taking government's thumb off of the scale and letting free market decide will Americans get the efficient and the affordable transportation that they need and that they want. Mr. Goffman, do you agree that a ban on internal combustion engines affecting 17 states and over 40% of our domestic market would be a de facto national policy? I'm not sure, and I, that, it, and I, I am and sure. I think it would, it would guide market forces with that 40% domestic market. Uh, the automakers have let us know that that was part of their decision of how they will roll out new, new vehicles. Mr. Goffman, do you think it is appropriate for a policy toll that was meant to address, address local pollution concerns in California in the 60s and 70s be used to create a national ban on internal combustion engines? Uh, if you'll indulge me, I want to be a little bit circumspect since we do have that issue in front of us thanks to California petitioning for a waiver. That's like an adjudic adjudication process. So I, I hesitate to answer your question because it's a decision that we may have to make or will have to make to respond to the petition. Mr. Goffman, on May 10th, Administrator Regan testified in front of this subcommittee when I posed the question to him if he supported banning internal combustion engines, he responded, and I'm quoting, no, not at all. When asked if he supported consumer choice in vehicles, his response was, again, quoting, I don't see a near-term future where we don't have a fuel supply that complements electric vehicles and provides customer choice. So I'm gonna ask you the same question. Do you support a ban on internal combustion engines or consumer choice in vehicles? No. Thank you. Wouldn't granting a waiver for the California regulations be a ban on internal combustion engines? Uh, I don't know yet. And, and I think the ramifications are clear to all of us, that that in the 40% market share would be a national ban. 
do you think that automakers will produce one set of vehicles for California, another set for New York, maybe a set for West Virginia? Do you think there's a capability in production to have different vehicles for different parts of the United States? Uh, my, my understanding is this, historically the uh, auto manufacturers have striven to avoid making more than just one national fleet. But yet 40% of the market would be affected. Again, a de facto mandate of making EVs the only vehicle that Americans could choose to, dr to drive. Do you really think that the refining capacity- Gentlemen's time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield.